will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and in with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thank you, Judith. I wondered why um, the guys who went to Uganda chose this particular weekend to be away from the church, uh, particularly why Stephen chose this particular weekend to be away from church. And then I looked on the, the preaching plan at the subjects of the day, and Rodri had to do tabs on A Time to Die, which he was delighted about, <laughs> and I have to speak on tithing, offering, and gifts. <laughs> so that's why Stephen's away this weekend. <laughs> What a subject to speak about. It's probably, probably one of the most difficult subjects to speak about in church life, perhaps. And maybe especially after our decision on Wednesday to, to take the building project forward. I guess in the light of Wednesday night, it's probably a good time for us to, to have this subject. And I'm sure that's why it was programmed in for this week. But it's still a difficult subject for us to look at together. And we're probably all of us here are quite uncomfortable about talking about money. Most of us, at least. We don't really like to tell people how much things cost, do we? Unless we've got a great bargain and then we, we delight in telling people how much we've saved, even if we didn't need the item in the first place. <laughs> but we're very private, aren't we, about things like our salaries. We don't generally tell people what we earn. We're private perhaps about how much we might spend on a house or on a holiday or on a car. And of course, we're very private about how much we give to charities and how much we give away. The Bible seems to recognise that money, financial matters, are actually a big issue for people. And if that was true 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, it seems to be even more true today. That financial matters are, are so important to us and to our world. And whether it's the Old Testament prophets challenging the people to give, or whether it's Jesus addressing the issue in his sermons, or in his conversations, or in the stories that he told, or whether it's Paul teaching the early Christians about giving, there's plenty of guidance within scripture about how we're to deal with our finances. There's warnings and there's encouragements. <coughs> I was looking at, on the internet for some kind of stories to share with you. And I came across this one story this week about a mother who wanted her, her daughter to, to, to learn a lesson about giving. So before church, she gave her daughter two coins. She gave her a one pound coin and a 20p coin, 20 pence piece. And she said to her little girl, she said, when it comes to the time when, when it, there's the offering, it's up to you which coin you choose to put in. You can either choose to put in the one pound coin or the 20 pence piece. It's completely up to you. And at the end of the service, the, the mother said to her, her daughter, what did you give? Which coin did you keep for yourself? And the daughter replied, she said, I was going to give the one pound coin until the man at the front said that God loves a cheerful giver. And I knew I would be much more cheerful if I kept the one pound <laughs> coin for myself. So I, I gave the 20p piece. And that's where that line comes from this morning. Our passage today has Paul telling the Corinthians that God loves a cheerful giver. It's a phrase we, we hear a lot, isn't it? But where do we start with this subject? Well, it might be easier if we were very legalistic about this, if we were very legalistic about it all this morning. It might be easier if I stand here in authority and pronounce to you that we should all give a tithe, 10% of our income. But I don't actually believe the Lord is... Is that interested in, in how much we give, what he's more interested in 
is a heart. I don't believe the Lord is so much interested in the amount we give. He's more interested in the attitude of our heart about giving. And I think that's what Paul is getting at when he says that God loves a cheerful giver. Perhaps a good question to ask is, is why do we give? Well, an easy answer to that is we, we need to give, don't we? If we stop giving, then, then churches and mission organisations would grind to a halt. They depend upon our giving. But we need to go deeper than that with a question this morning. Why do we give? There are a myriad of responses to that question this morning. Some people give out of habit. It's something that they learnt at an early age and they just kind of do it out of habit. That's what they do. They give a certain amount away. Some people give out of guilt. Somehow it makes you feel better. Perhaps some people give money in lieu of, of service. Perhaps they're very busy and they feel they haven't got much time to give to good causes or to give to the church. So it's easier to stick your hand in your pocket and give some money. Some people give to make themselves feel better. It often feels very nice, doesn't it, to give money away? Not always. Some people give because maybe a particular cause is, has really kind of pulled on their heartstrings. They feel compassionate and if they feel the need to respond to a particular cause or a particular plight of a group of people. And I guess some people don't really give at all. Well, as we look at this passage in 2 Corinthians, I think Paul would want to tell us the reason why we should give. And I think that's at the heart of this particular passage in Corinthians. And I think the primary reason that Paul tells us that we should give is actually in response to all that Christ has done for us. That's the primary reason for us to give. And if this is our motivation, all that God has done for us, then we're actually going to be natural, free, generous um, and cheerful givers. If we really contemplate all that Christ has done for us, then our natural response will to be, it's not put very well, will for us to be generous and spontaneous and cheerful givers. And at the beginning of the service, it was my intention really to draw us back to all that God has done for us, to help us to focus upon all that Christ has done for us. And as we focus and remind ourselves of all that Christ has done, if we do that, we will be unable to do anything less than to give back to God with gen generous and cheerful hearts. We've been reminding in, in our readings, we've been reminding in our prayers, in our songs, in the words that we've heard, that God loved us so much that he sent his son for us. Paul says this in Romans, a verse you'll be very familiar with. He says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I've also shared that verse from, from John, where, where John tells the people listening and reading his letter that we love because God first loved us. Well, I think John would also say that we give because God first gave to us. And we've also already heard this morning, we've heard it read and we thought about it a little bit with when the children were with us, that Paul ends this passage by saying, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. You get the feeling that Paul is unable really to, to be able to put into words to give justice to this amazing gift of God. And so he ends up with this sentence, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So I think you can see that in chapter 9 of this, this, uh, this book, this 2 Corinthians, Paul is encouraging the Christians to give generously. And he says in verse 12, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So our basis for giving, our underlying reason for giving, 
should be 